Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. So in the last video, I showed you how to use data stores, like on a very basic level. And in this video, I will show you how to actually implement data stores in your game when players leave or join your game. So in order to demonstrate, I'm going to make a script in server script service. And so since we want to get events when our player players leave or join, we first need to find the player service, which would be game get service players. And because this function this service has many events that we will need. The next thing we want to define is of course the data store service, which would be game get service data store service. So these are the two basic services that we will need in our game. So the first thing we want to do after we have defined our variables is add a function for when our player joins the game. And the way we're going to do that is do player service dot player added. So this is an event. If you don't know what an event is, I have a tutorial about that. I will link it right now. And this event will fire whenever a player joins and it will give you the parameter of the player that joins. And so in order to demonstrate this, we're going to do something that many games use. I use it a lot as well. We're going to use leader stats. Now, if you don't know, leader stats are the little things when your Roblox character spawns in the top right. You'll see them. They're just the, um, they can be your deaths or like the money that you have. They just show up in the default roblox gui and you can use that to show certain stats and the way you customize it is by making a leader stats folder in the player so we're going to do local leader stats equals instance dot new folder so this will make our folder but we have to name this folder to leader stats so roblox knows that it needs to display them and then we're going to parent this folder to our player and then in the leader stats we're going to make a money value to be instance dot new int value so just make an int value in our player what well, we actually do put in our player so we're going to set the money dot name to money and then money dot parent to our leader stats folder so this is our basic little example value for us to test our data store. So if we run this, you can see in the top right, there is a money value next to my name. So that works great. So now that we have this set up, we need to actually implement our data stores into the game. So what you want to do with data stores when a player leaves or joins is when a player joins your game, you want to load the data store value if they have it. And when they leave it, you want to save that value. So the first thing we're going to do before we do any of that is define our data store. So local, we're just going to call this money store equals data store service get data store money so this will get the data store with all of our money in it and so we can set and get stuff from it so the next thing we're going to want to do is to set or actually not set get a value from the money store whenever a player joins so we're going to do local save data and we're not going to set this to anything because the next thing we're going to do is do local success equals p call function and the reason we're p calling it again if you don't want that if you didn't watch the last video is because this protects our script from erroring if an error happens because data stores are prone to error this p call will catch it and it, if the thing that it's running is successful and it does not cause an error success will equal true Otherwise, success will equal false. So this will be good later when we can 
see if our data store grab was successful or not. Because, for example, if a, player, if a new player joins, they won't have any saved data, so this will obviously error. And then in this pcall function, we're going to set save data equal to money store get async. I'm going to use the player dot user ID. And again, we are not using the player dot name because that you can change a name in Roblox, but you cannot change your user ID. That stays consistent with every Roblox account forever. So now we assign our save data to the get async. So if this errors, save data won't really equal anything. And that will be useful when we check to see if it's actually there. So we are going to adopt a defensive programming style right now. Which basically means we always want to be checking if our stuff is there to make sure no errors happen and our script stays safe. So we first want to check if there's if it's a successful get async or like data store grab basically. And we also want to check if the save data is actually there. And so this is basically saying if it's successful and we still have saved data, then we'll do something. And I'm just using nested if loops because it just makes a little more sense. And putting and might mess it up if like save data isn't there or something like that. But now that we have our save data, we want to set our money dot value to the save data. And remember, I'm using money dot value since this is an int value. And in order to assign or change the value of our int value, you have to use value property. You can't just set money equals save data because it'll think you're setting the object to a number and it would error. So there we go. Now we have our player added event function that gets whatever data we have stored. And if we don't have data, it won't do anything. So the next thing we actually have to do is save the player's data when they leave. And that is actually pretty simple. So we're gonna do player service dot player removing, which is an event that fires whenever the player leaves the game. And we're going to connect a function to it. And this function takes one parameter, which is the player, just like the player added event up here. So I need to zoom in a little bit. So in this player removing event, first thing we want to do is actually get the money value of our player. So player dot leader stats dot money and the other thing we have to do is save it using the set async function of our data store so of course i'm going to wrap it in pcall and i'm going to access the money store and set async and the id or the key i should say is the player user id and the value will be money dot value because this is an int value and you need to get the value if you want to actually get the integer which is representing the money in this case and so what this will do is it'll go to our data store set the key of the player.user id to the money.value so our get async can get the key player.user id and it'll return the money.value that we saved down here so that should work but the problem is is this should work fine most of the time but when you're the last player on the server the server might shut down prematurely. And so this may cause your data not to be saved. So we actually have to engineer a solution for that. So what I'm going to do is first define our player count. And I'll explain this after we finish it. And I'm gonna define player count, player count equals zero. And it's gonna be pretty self-explanatory. In our player added event, we're going to set player count to player count plus one. So every time a player joins, the player count will increase by one. And the player removing event, we're gonna do player count equals player count minus one. So every time a player leaves, we subtract from the player count. So we'll have an active number of players. And that's kind of useless on its own, so we have to actually add functionality. So we have to first define a bindable event I'm going to name this the player leave event. And this event will fire whenever a player leaves. So it's going to be instance.new bindable event. We don't really have to parent it to anything. And so after we subtract the player account, we're going to do the player leave event fire. 
So that's also kind of useless on its own. And the one thing that will bring it all together is a function that we're going to assign to game bind to close. So game bind to close is something where you can bind an event to whenever the server is shutting down. And what we're going to do in this event is we're going to have a while loop while the player count is greater than zero, then not then, my bad. It's while player count is greater than zero, do. And in this loop, we're going to do the player leave event event dot event wait. So what this does is a player joins, we add one to the player count. A player leaves, we subtract one to the player count, and then we fire this event. And so what will happen when the server shuts down is let's just say this function runs before the player is like done leaving. So what will happen is it'll say while player counts greater than zero. Oh, look at that player counts later than greater than zero. Like the player just left, so it's like the split second before. We want to wait until this event fires. So it'll wait until this part of the function is done. And then the game will actually shut down. So, and this, by the way, we're using the wait part of an event. You could connect this to something. It wouldn't really matter, though. And, uh, by the way, if you don't know what this exactly is, again, I have a event tutorial. And so, this will basically just prevent our player data from being lost, like when the server shuts down before it can set async. It just has to wait for this to fire. So, if we run this everything should be quite normal and the way i'm going to change my player coin or money amount is i'm going to go to home in the top bar home current client i'm going to click on that and it'll switch me to the server so the reason i'm doing this is in order for me to go to the coins and change it because it actually won't register if i do it in the client so you can see I've been doing some testing before, set to 50 already. Let's just set that to 100. And then if we stop it, and let's start it up again, because it should have saved. If we join back in, you can see our money is set to 100. So let me just do that again real quick. Let go to player. Let's just say I want to set my money to zero. Let's just say I bought something. And we shut down the server. It'll wait for our data to save. And if we load back in, if we load back in, whoops, our money will be zero. So look at that. That works very well. And so that's basically it for a basic in-game example of data stores. So this is a very, very robust system. I've used it in all of my games. It works wonderfully for me. Just keep in mind, sometimes when you're using this in Roblox Studio, it might be a little bit inconsistent, but in your game, actually, it should work perfectly fine. It's worked perfectly fine for me most of the time. And because Roblox Studio is kind of inconsistent, since instead of actually leaving the game, a lot of the time you're just pressing the stop button. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to comment them below. I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.